For more on the manhunt, I want to bring in Tracy Walder, News Nation national security contributor, former CIA officer, and former FBI special agent. Tracy, thanks for being here. Uh, I want to talk about the search to begin with. So they've got this massive area. He's got the weather on his side because it's not all too uncomfortable out there, even at night, for him to be hiding in the woods. Technologically speaking, what are some of the tools and resources that these search teams will be using to try to pinpoint where he may be hiding? Well, thank you so much for having me, Marnie. So I think the first things first is they're mostly going to focus this on a ground search. This is a very thickly wooded forest that he has disappeared into, and it's a forest that he may or may not have been familiar with. He does come from a family of loggers and lumberjacks around this area, within 20 miles of this area, so he may be quite familiar. The next thing that they'll probably do, particularly at nighttime, is actually use drones. There are drones that have thermal sensors on them, and so that's most likely what they'll be using those drones for. They'll be able to spot sometimes human activity depending on the sensitivity of those drones as well as things like potential campfires that may have been made and that's probably how they're able to pinpoint where he has been and the direction that he may be going to. And speaking of drones, I want to play for folks at home Lieutenant Colonel George Bivens from the Pennsylvania State Police about the recent discovery of a drone in the area of the prison near the time of his escape. Let's listen. I'm not a big believer in coincidences, but um, what I would tell you is that just prior to the escape, there was a drone flying in that area. It could be that there is a perfectly innocent and reasonable explanation. Uh, it could also be that it was somehow connected to his escape. Tracy, how does this change or alter the investigation in the likelihood that he did receive assistance prior to his escape and that he may be getting help now? So I thought about this a little bit. I was a drone operator during my time um, in working in national security. And there's kind of two ways that we can look at this. One thing is this is bad and that potentially this could have been used as a way to help him. If it was used as a way to help him, perhaps we can track the activity of that drone and where the drone came from. Are there tire tracks from somebody who was out there flying the drone? Because we don't know how far this drone was able to go. Or was this just, you know, a, a someone in the neighborhood who purchased a drone off of Amazon. It's hard to say at this point, but I too don't necessarily believe in coincidences and I find it highly unusual that there was a drone flying at this time at night. And my guess is that this was probably an IR sensing drone that could see thermal activity and could perhaps tip him off to how close police were to him. Right. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.